Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 48 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. Uh, I'm Deepak. We have Kumaran, who is a CTO and chief mentor for Tiny Magic. And we have Gautam, who is uh, who works for Landmark in very interesting areas uh, like, like Power BI, automation, uh, dynamics, and all kinds of interesting things in the retail sector. Uh, welcome, Gautam. And I believe Gotham today has an interesting question to ask. And then to, in this, through this episode, we are trying to discover an answer to that uh, question. Hopefully we can uh, arrive at some, uh, uh, some suggestions for Gotham. Gotham, go ahead, share your uh, question and your uh, comments about what you want to ask. Sure. Uh, thank you, Deepak. Uh, so um, the the question what I was also having a discussion with Kumaran last week. So uh, the question was uh, like, okay, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, RPA tools in the market, right? So which is like, uh, you have UiPath, you have uh, Microsoft or Power Automate or Flow. So you have uh, the so tools like this, which are more of uh, enterprise and also like uh, has a price attached to it because we have to buy the licenses and every licenses has tiers and basis the tiers you might have to purchase it. And then uh, you will also have to see which tier you have to fit in and then you have to uh, go for the procurement. So uh, I was having a discussion with the Microsoft team and uh, I got to know that, okay, even within uh, the Microsoft flow, they have multiple licensing right so which is like vertical licensing is what they just told so when i when they say vertical licensing it's basically if you buy a office package they give a flow license attached only for integrating office package and if you buy a dynamic license you give they give flow license only for integrating dynamics so if i need to do a cross application rpa between a dynamics and a, a office 365 right or a dynamic center power bi so when i need to do a horizontal uh, uh, structuring of all these applications there is a different license see that is the way uh, the enterprise the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the big tech companies also play with right so for the, for the licensing models so what i was asking is what is the best uh, like okay rpa tools that we can use on an open source model and which mm -hmm. has proven effect on multi on being implemented on uh, uh, enterprise applications. Kumaran, you want to take a stab at this first? Um, so, question. So, what's your actual question? You describe okay. the scenario. I get that. What's your actual yeah. question? My question is, okay, from the uh, enterprise applications, like, okay, Dynamics is my ERP, mm -hmm. right? So likewise, all organization has SAP, uh, Oracle, so have a different ERPs. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know uh, against these applications or the enterprise applications, which, which, which open source RPA has proven effective solution against them? Okay. So short answer, I don't know. Okay. But I'm more curious to understand why open source. Uh, the licensing model, that is the reason why I wanted to basically explore so in, open source. In other words, it's cost. cost. It's too expensive. Cost, expensive, yes. Okay. Uh, this will take a slightly deviant angle, but just to be, let's just capture that point and we'll come back to this discussion okay now classically i think we have i think me and deepak we have had this cost and license discussion for decades right and open source i think from that time we step in microsoft we have been having this okay so there is this notion that open source is free or cheap okay whereas it actually isn't okay so the hidden costs there will be, uh, especially in an enterprise, right? There is no continuity, okay? When people come, keep coming and going, right? Somebody needs to own that. It can be like patching of things, newer versions, keeping old code, documenting and things like that, right? When you have open source, like let's say it's an old version, nobody updated it. Who is responsible? Nobody, okay? Now, 
in an enterprise people come and go this is true right when it is an individual doing a project it is different but in an enterprise case it's true people just move departments or move from one capability to another so when you have a paid solution you have certain continuity now if that open source solution goes off without people handing it over because it's not very well documented typically open source solutions are not that documented and there's no support for that right but this guy red hat linux is something in between right it's neither a open source nor a commercial it's somewhere in between so technically red hat is not open source or it's not free right it is open source but it is commercial so let's be clear open source is different free is with different okay open source is not equal to free open node is not equal to cheap so there are two aspects to open source not being free one the cost of maintaining it the cost of somebody who's going to support or answer a question and to so this red hat answers okay it's open source but i will support i'll take responsibility for it right so that is one part of it the second so these are implicit cuz it's very hard to calculate because it's an expense that's going to happen in the future okay right. so it's difficult to evaluate what is the price you are actually paying it's just that you're not paying it now it's like buying credit card poor analogy but it's though currently today i didn't pay anything i swipe my card i didn't give any cash i got some product home but eventually i have to repay it right there's no nothing like a free lunch okay so where is the cost that i'm going to pay where is the interest that i'm paying technical debt for the future <laughs> technical debt for the future yeah that's actually a better way of looking at it right open source are technical debts that we accrue it's not free okay right. so then that leads us to back to our kind of somewhere back halfway to the main question right so if it is a cost are we able to justify the saving that i'm going to get by automation what am i going to save and how will this thing i think that's a key question to answer rather than oh it's costly it's expensive i won't spend no 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 not like that right what is the automation that i'm going to do what is the benefit that it would give me okay and how much am i going to save now we have been working with you you can actually see a public case study that we have done for first source okay it is citizen automation ui path commercial software we have spent money on that okay they have spent money on training and they spend money on license okay and we have evolved a model to say if i'm going to give a license to a citizen developer that person should have already developed one automation right which would pay for the cost of the training plus the license then i will give them a pro license okay so it's a very clear model if a person is get, getting a ui path license by either time they get the license they have already paid for that license okay one benefit of automation like let's say i am doing a task and it's actually pretty simple right it can be calculated very easily now this is actually what we have uh, done i haven't prepared for it so i cannot share this as it's recorded but i'll tell you the math behind it it's a very simple math there is this person who generates a end of day it's a sales tracking right so the team leader end of day makes a report makes a excel table of who are the people and how much sale did they do where they above target below target make a table of that and send it as an email at the end of the day to all the team members okay mm. because they are on the calls and doing it the team leader extracts it from a application web application okay now in the ui path training we help to identify this process okay and we kind of guide them to which is the best process to do it's not like oh i woke up from sleep i will automate this and i went and wrote a bot no not like that there has to be a method behind the madness right so we kind of help them to identify so when they come up with the idea we teach them the tool and say is it even worth automating if it is not don't touch it don't automate that okay so by which there were three opportunities out of which this one we took up okay 
Now this one, it takes them to generate this mail and send it to a team of 10 people. It takes five minutes. Okay. They do it daily. So now the math is very simple. Five into 24. Okay. So that is like five into 24 is 120 minutes, which is two hours a month. Okay. The person is getting $15. So they're saving $30 a month. That is $360 in an year. Now nobody can refute it. Right. So it's like five minutes is saving. Let's say it took six minutes with automation. It is done in 30 seconds to set up and I think put another. So five, $360 is an inarguable saving of money. Okay. Right. Now, roughly the license cost was $1,000. I'm telling UA path training included roughly. Okay, these are rough numbers, mm. not exact numbers. So it's training, UiPath training, personal training, their time off in learning this, all that put together, license put together is $3,000. I mean, $1,000. Okay, so roughly if this bot is run for three years, you get return on investment. Straight line. There's no nothing to be discussed here. Okay, so there's a match which saves time. Three years return of investment is there. Now that's not the interesting part. What they were able to do is now when they send this mail, all the team knows who did well and who didn't do well. That's not a good thing, right? And why are they doing it? Because this person doesn't have the time to do it for every single person. Because if there are 10 team members, it will take them five minutes to make it. So if they do it for 10 people, it will actually be 50 minutes to send that report to each one separately. So to optimize that, they put everything in one single email. Now, what's the complication with that? Now, somebody who's not performing well, the entire world knows I'm not performing well. Now, you and I have been in corporate world for a long time. It takes one email to screw up my reputation. It will take 100 mails to get it back. Okay. So three reports telling this guy didn't meet their numbers. The word spreads. Now, nobody else wants to touch that person in any other team also. What happened to privacy? Thrown under the bus. For what? Efficiency. Okay. Now, automation. This is where it gets interesting. So, the automation was not done to automate that task which became five minutes. Okay. Now, because they could automate this, they transformed it to a different level and said, now I will send individual mails to all because I have automation in space. So now 10 mails will be sent to each of them. Now take a step back. It is 50 minutes per day. Okay. That $360, which I said, right into 10. $3,600. You actually have a profit of $2,000 now because of RPA. Licensing discussion is out of the window, provided you get it right. Now, why do you care? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, and we haven't even considered the uh, rework cost there. I mean, uh, the person, if he makes a mistake because of the source, exactly. that also is there. That is there. And, and the thing is, right, now this bot is for just one person, right? Now, when you replicate yeah. it to others, the training and development cost is removed because this is a citizenship citizen developer, which means a, a team leader, there are 50 more team leaders in the company. Now, you can give the thing to 50 more team leaders, which means the 50 million leaders have to just deploy this bot. They don't even have to right. know UI path. They don't right. even have to go through development. Okay, so for all the other 50 of them, you just consider, let's say 50% is licensing cost, $500. Mm. You still have $3,100 saved for all of them. Now, net net, are you spending money or are you earning money by doing RPA? Okay. Yes, you're actually increasing the bottom line. So we need to think of RPA in a very different way.
looking at it so i'm taking a very interesting case where it is not just a cost cutting tool it is a business transforming tool we got to use the tool the right way yes within cost also you could have in 3 years you would have got return mm. on investment it's still not bad right. okay but, but then if you look at it nicely there are even better opportunities that will emerge yeah. okay so but then now we'll come back to open source okay i don't have an answer to your question <laughs> I, i was just looking at means i just sent a link to to all of us uh, means there are the i just did a but search. just one point i'll yeah. just tell you so i think gautam the point of architecture is not just answering a question right it is the ability to generate insights and look at things differently yes Mm. that's the idea right if yeah. i kind of say you know this is costly or this thing then it gets become an engineering mindset now i'm not ruling out right for example if you could uh, get different if you can get a open source tool which is not complicated which is easy kind of a thing right yeah we could use that right mm. I, and i think rpa is technically speaking it has been there for many time you open excel hit record macro and then you do a bunch of things and then play macro that's rpa yes. it's been there for decades it's not something new yeah okay so then the question comes why didn't somebody do it is the most important question it, it was already there people got excel you got excel rpa for free but why was it not used is an important question to be answered right. okay deepak yeah no just to pile on that excel thing is excel has been used quite I me mean, this macros means i i know of people especially in finance world they, they have been using this macros for a very long time but on the point of automation uh, the the way i think about automation is when do you automate right so to 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 elaborate a little bit on what uh, kumaran was saying about giving them the tools to evaluate the value of automation before that uh, when you start thinking about automation there these are the things which i think about one is are you trying to remove toil which is basically useless effort repetitive effort right which is somebody has to repetitively do it and you are trying to remove that effort right that is one part which you can easily quantify in terms of time used and get that multiplication factor and get the actual value out of it remove that repetitive effort second is complexity right it is too complex to do it manually right so that is also one area where you can look at automation where it may not be high frequency right it is not high frequency but it is too complicated to do it manually right and related to that is the accuracy of doing that thing you can do it manually it is complex but you are likely to make mistakes right so so these are these are the three reasons i would take up I say, do I really want to automate, right? And then you can apply the maths which uh, which Kumaran was talking about, right? And and on the examples which are available, I just did a quick search, and there are like six tools which are available uh, for robotic uh, open source robotic uh, process automation. One is called Tag UI, right? Uh, it, it is by a company in Singapore. There is something called RPA for Python, right? There is uh, uh, there is another one called uh, Uh, robocorp right then there is a, a robot framework something called automagica uh, you might have seen this gautam and automagica is available on github by the way so there is a github to a github uh, uh, available there is something called task t or something tasked right so free and open source right so all of them seem to have a github uh, uh, link which you can go and check that is i'm just looking from a website called enterpriseproject.com right and they have an article published recently not just just about 2 years ago 2020 so i'm sure there are much more tools uh, this this is what the came from the top of the search right but having the knowledge of these tools and obviously applying the the concepts which we just talked about on deciding whether you want to pay for it or whether are first deciding whether automation is worth to do or not and then deciding the cost mathematics of using an open source or 
the licensed one, right? With all the caveats which we just spoke about. I think that should that should be a good answer to your uh, question. I, I know we didn't really answer your question, but I hope that quick uh, <laughs> web search will give you much more better answers. But I think adding this layer of... Uh, yeah, I think discussion. there's also a lot of bias probably in my and Deepak's thinking, right? Uh, we kind of strongly Be believe that rather than going for free, pay for it, but make sure you get the value of what you're paying for rather than free, I think is a uh, misnomer. <laughs> misnomer, correct. And maybe as an owner, I'm not taking complete responsibility, right? So if it's free, I'm less accountable. No, nobody will question me, right? Because I didn't pay anything, right? Rather, I would actually pay for something and make sure results happen. It is a lot more uh, interesting and it kind of maybe it confirmation. What kind of worries me with this thing is when I see GitHub, right? I go to GitHub. Now, where do I help find documentation? It is not very clear. Okay. And if I look at this Automagica, for example, these things really unnerve me. Okay. So the last thing which I see is, you know, we have the latest version, 13th October 20, 2020. It is, oops, two years you guys haven't touched anything. Now there is a site to automagica.com. I right click that it goes and says, non-image content type written. The site itself is not loading. Okay. <laughs> no, exactly. Kumaran, if you, if you remember my exact words, what I was asking is a reliable open source because <laughs> <laughs> we need to see the reliability of also. Ah, you so, want to free, but you want safety also. Ah. <laughs> no, no. The secur security aspect also is, uh, is uh, quite important, right? Yes, uh, it does. Like, In enterprise world, it does become that. See, I think yep. of the recent things which I have been super impressed with something which is open source is something which like OBS, right? Which I use. I think it's extraordinary. Now, if somebody charged me something like uh, $20, $30, I would still pay for it. It's worth it. Right? It really need not be open source. Up to $30, I wouldn't mind paying for OBS. I do get value in return for that. Yep. What is that again, Kubrin? OBS, the, the thing which I do this thing, no, for our display, all this, whatever this oh, okay, okay. of cameras, yeah, the, 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 this, Editing. yeah, oh. no, it's just this display thing, right? All these magics which I'm doing. Oh. Okay, so okay, okay. all this is from uh, like so these things moving from one screen to another, setting it up. This is all with OBS, right? It helps me in. Uh, showing and display and recording for my nature of work it's definitely worth it right so uh reliability is actually a tough no we see when the moment you say github right somebody has to take ownership within your team you cannot rely on anybody else for that okay and right. in enterprises their job is to solve a business problem not take care of writing code maintaining a framework and take unless unless you want to be a Netflix or a Spotify who want to set a benchmark like Netflix, right? They lead in terms of Spotify led how to develop software squad model. Netflix came up with how to write resilient code, right? How to think write code, which can take load. Yeah. So they were, even though it is an entertainment, Spotify is a music distribution company and Netflix is a video distribution company. They were also leaders in the technical space. They were technology leaders. Does your company want to be a technology leader? Facebook, they lead react JS. Okay. But they are actually a social media company. Okay. So you got to take a call, whether if you want to take ownership of some open source code, right? Now, how much level you want to go depends. But if you're thinking, you know, my team is, I can't afford an expensive developer or resource or my budget is not there. So I am taking lower expensive resources. And then you go and take open source software. That's a very deadly combination. It's like uh, gasoline and uh, a kid with a matchbox next to it. <laughs> Uh, but, but the slow fuse with the slow fuse, it will it will come and 
hurt you later. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I would, I mean, is it, so you can go for open source if you have excellent technical expertise. It's a completely different thing. Yes. You got to have people who know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. What am I downloading? What am I installing? How do I get it up and going? I, I give a very simple example, right? Log4j. Yes. What was that? Open source. Oh. Yes. Now, who will take going to go take responsibility for this? Unfortunately, nobody can. Nobody will. But everybody is screwed. Maybe that's the advantage of. But I look, think, I the think thing log is, for log J for J is the entire world's problem. So you will escape. But let's assume Gautam alone had implemented log for J. You would lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, log for J has has created this question mark now for a lot of people who are using open source, right? That what this happens again and these, these things are hiding in open sight, right? Like the whole idea of open source was everybody can see it, right? So wh why, do, why do I have to worry about it, right? Since everybody can see it, why, why, should, why should I spend my effort uh, in finding out whether it is secure or not, right? Now that is that is come by come back to bite us now. So I think Gautam, to answer your question, be careful with your decision. <laughs> that is the uh, that is the that is the answer from this discussion. There are tools available. You want to invest in in a technic technology. So this will be an investment. Don't think about it in the free. It is just that you have access to the source code. If you want to actually be able to uh, contribute, I would say if you want, to, uh, in this scenario, if you really want to contribute to the source code and understand it, then you want, might want to see, see it, use it as, uh, as, uh, as a tool. But uh, rather than that, my advice is to think seriously about uh, whether you really want to pay for something or use something free. You, you can even try the freemium model, right? At least yeah. where, where you have the option to pay. Right. See, I, I think even with both, if you take UiPath or with Power Automate, right? Desktop, we're talking about, right? You can start with Power Automate on the cloud. That becomes a part of, mostly if you have E1, it will be already a part of that. That is one thing that you can do, right? Or you take the free version, build the bot, build the case study, be clear why the return on investment and go with your head high and then say, I'm going to spend $1,000 on this because I will get the return on investment. What is your problem? Right. I think that would be a uh, good, good, good strategy. It's yeah. yeah and more assured, right. From an enterprise, like if something has to happen, so that would, uh, or if it's going to be op open, source then who in your team is going to take responsibility for that all right maybe it's too much to ask the team member they're struggling to write basic code now you want them to uh, take responsibility. yeah so i i think the the decision point is very clear it is not about saving cost you will you may up may not end up saving cost by using mm. using open source that's the that's the message we are giving right it is right. possible to save cost we are not saying but there is a lot of investment behind it, which is time and effort and responsibility of the people who, who will actually own it. So, like if you take, take, take the free version, right, which is there, develop a bot, calculate the yeah. benefit, right? And now if you can't calculate the benefit for that, maybe it's not an automation opportunity at all. Yep. You're we're better off doing right. it manually. See, if you're going to do something and it's not going to save a thousand dollars, why automate it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Now, because it's free, you will actually automate it. Yes. You will end <laughs> up doing something which is not really worth it. I have a funny example. I have a funny example of uh, you, ha you have all these now in India. Now we have all these uh, uh, 
morning milk supply applications at least in bangalore you can have all these things and it says big basket and all these dailies ninja something something all these applications are there right Correct. they will let you select what milk you want what bread you want all those things and then they will give it to you on the morning right now what i figured out was all this automation does not work for for our household because one is it is difficult one is if the if there is a mistake because obviously this is run by the milkmen the uh, who who really they can make mistakes right so they instead of giving this they gave that now we have to go back into the app and undo this thing and they will give you the credit and all those things right that is very difficult to keep track of right and then you have to see how much money you have to keep in the wallet and all those things right so instead of that my milkman offers a very simple solution says so i will just give you a coupon booklet how many ever pack, pack, uh, packets you want you just put so many coupons i will give you that end of story no reference of any data required for me to manage i put two coupons i get two packets i put three coupons i get three packets i don't have to manage any application no automation required right so this one in my view was a simpler solution than than uh, going with that application so you leave the coupons in the bag he will come look at it leave that much amount of exactly in, uh, exactly because anyway he is the same guy right the same guy has to deliver from the application also got it right but uh, basically <laughs> yes this this is a, this is a this is a low cost solution <laughs> yeah you don't actually have to drop money but you are just uh, keeping some prepaid coupons or a postpaid coupon <laughs> yes yes yeah so in fact gautam there is a system of engagement there's no system of records <laughs> yes yes correct there's actually no, there's this no is no need for record there's no need for system of record it's just a system of engagement and i, th- I think it's actually brilliant right yeah you have a system of engagement but there's no system of records yeah. probably if he wants the milkman can have a system of records to say who how many coupons who i sold to how much yeah it's actually optional because it's yeah. taken care of yeah. i won't give coupons until i get money exactly okay. True, and true. the customer will say if i want milk i will give coupons so you actually eliminate the need for a record the decision is taken at that point <laughs> itself yes yes yeah. so i think i think the the moral of the story here is it, the the need for automation or need for an application is has to be very very context sensitive so <laughs> deepa getting to your thing right okay so this is the main use case now if you capture raw data right at some point somebody can actually say deepak will have non saturated milk on saturday on <laughs> tuesday he drinks less milk <laughs> those things can be done and then on uh, so how can i make deepak drink milk more on thursday or friday but that's again that one or two percent who needs that broad data dashboard kind of data yeah, that, that's what it says amazon knows more about what you are what you eat and drink and in what areas what is being sold that they can predict all what whatever inventory they need <laughs> right so maybe gautam for if you want to achieve that kind of thing and you want to invest in that technology maybe you want to invest in learning those auto, auto, open source automation tools Uh, or the if you want just quick solutions just go with the, any of the vendor of your choice <laughs> that is the outcome right so thank you for listening and uh, gautam uh, thank you for asking this question we had a very interesting discussion hope uh, listeners and viewers got something out of it uh, yeah even i learned a couple of uh, open source <laughs> things which i want to play with it's a great great question like i think there was something called warp drive and and there was another tool which i wanted to find for a long time and i lost the name mm-hmm. no actually got it it's called that contu right its names got changed so i couldn't get to the tool which is for visual testing uh, which can be used here also right. it's it's definitely worth a try gautam but i think it would be like for geeks mm-hmm. at this point if you want to open source tools is for geeks exactly not mm. for general exactly. people who are trying out stuff for pre- geeks no the geek can be a fresher experienced person that's different but open yeah. source is for geeks 
not for the common man yeah for enterprises especially you yeah. could have Correct. geeks in the enterprise you could yeah but by uh, mistake for a, more of a startup <laughs> environment uh, yes i totally agree yeah startups are also not geeks don't be under that misconception <laughs> geeks are geeks geeks are ones who like technology exude enthused by it want to play around with it will take ownership and gear uh, so these exist in startup and in enterprise but not all enterprise startup people are geeks hmm. they would love hmm. to call themselves geeks just because they are in startup <laughs> okay right <clears throat> so thank you and uh, great question stop the recording now and uh, we'll yeah. see you the next time